you guys sh going to share your screen and take a look at what's going on? All right. I can I can see it now. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to show you what the, pro the, the problem is, and I know you're going to be able to fix it really quick. Okay. Because I can't spread it up. I can't spread it up. Sure. So the new gender in the economy study group I made. Okay. Here it is. Great. And, you know, all the... However, when I go back home, mm -hmm. I never find home. Okay. Okay. So I think we have to change the, the link for that homepage. You want, want to take a look at that? Can you, um, can you actually open up what the homepage is supposed to be? Can you navigate there um, just by okay, typing in there? Okay, sweet. Okay. Aha. Okay, so it's still loading on my end, but um, I think what we want to do is we probably want to copy that URL from like the top there, so where it says forward slash Drupal forward slash G I T E. Yeah. I think if we copy that. Okay. And now, my, for some reason, the screen share seems frozen. Okay, now it's going. Never mind. Sorry. The screen share was frozen for a second, but it's good now. You look like you're logged in there. Can you? Oh, but that's is that different URL? This is the new Drupal. Aha. Okay. Cool. Sure. Hmm. Is it admin? I can't remember either. I know. Um, I can't remember. Did did you have a okay? I got it. Perfect. Oh. Eh. <laughs> okay. Well, you're you're logged in. Great. <laughs> okay. So I think if you know if. Since that homepage was that, um, I think it was forward slash Drupal forward slash G-I-T-E, we just, I think we just want to update that menu link to make sure that it's using that. So if you go back to looking at that page, so if you view that page, for instance. Is it what you want me to do? Um, sorry, it's, it's frozen on my end, so I can't really see what you're looking at right now. I'm just going to have to give it a second to come through. I'm not sure why it's so frozen like that. Let's see. It's like it says it's still loading with the screen that I'm looking at. Um, so right now I'm on the, I'm in the, I'm in the edit view for the whole Okay. Um, I want to see like the the view side of it. So like if you click the view link at the top, and then I think we can just edit from there. Although like, okay, okay, I can see it again. Um, okay, so we're on this view side, and so that if we copy that URL, just the forward slash Drupal forward slash G I T E, and then if we edit the menu, so you could go. Um, I don't know if you if you hover over the menu, do you get one of those little contextual links with the pencil or? Okay, you can go this way too. Yeah, that that works. That G I T E nav. Yep. And you want to 
um, instead of edit menu, you want, okay, actually that works perfect. Awesome. Yep, exactly. You're beating me to it. Oh, here it is. Yeah, exactly. So if you change Hold that. On, first, when I was first testing it out, you see that green ember how to create it? Mm -hmm. I called it new project. Ah, uh, yeah. That makes sense. Here, I can just put the ID. So yeah, for, okay. I think you do forward slash Drupal forward slash G-I-T-E, but uh, I, I don't remember. Unless, actually, you might be right. No, let's, let's look at another one. Yeah, that's a good idea. Because I can't remember how we subsided this. Oh, yep. So you're right. Just forward slash G-I-T-E would be the, the one to do. <laughs> you got a lot of tabs open there. <laughs> Looks like my computer on a normal day. Okay, so let me go here. And then go back. Yay, thank you. Okay, yeah, great. Okay. That's good. So here's the, the other um, problem, and it's probably, I don't know how to approach it. Okay. Or if it's at all possible. Um, I'm going to go to the um, original VRDRT. Okay. And what we do here, which is like a little more complicated, is we have the project page. Mm -hmm. Yep. And when we link on this, we link on this page. Okay. Which all of these obviously are on fields. Mm hmm. And then when we go to paper, when we click on this, it clicks on the paper, but then we have this here. Yeah. So it goes back to the project. Remember we created that view? Mm-hmm. Okay? Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. So now... Our new site. Okay. This is what the template looks like. Yeah, it looks nice. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's so weird. And Alex wants it so that we can also he wants what we did in the current site that mm -hmm. we made, be able to do in the new site. Gotcha. I don't think that's possible. No, this, this, this template, it doesn't have fields, you know, I'm not allowed to make content types. Mm. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I have no idea how to look like this. It should be possible. Um, it should be possible. So there's a couple different ways that you can go about doing it. So the way we did it previously was we we had so we had two two content types created and one of those content types had an entity reference field on it that would be able to select nodes from the other content type and then we created a view that um, pulled in the relationship of those different content types and then we put that into a block display and then we just attach that block to all of the other uh, content type. So that way, anytime you went to view any of those nodes from that certain content type, it had that view that was pulling in the relationship of the other content type. So we can definitely do that on any kind of Drupal site. It should be fine to do that. And then, oh, so this is the, so it's all, oh wait, this is, this is our subsite, right? That we're looking at right now? Okay. And, and I noticed that you that you and Alex did the security update, so thumbs up to, to you guys for doing that. That that's great. It looks uh, it's great that you know we don't have anything pending there, so that's awesome. But yeah, we should be able to like if you wanted to implement that on the other site, you should be able to add relationships in a similar way. You can do a bunch of different things to do, accomplish the same thing. You could actually even 
set those relationships up a, a couple different ways. If you didn't want to use like the block interface, you could use, um, you know, you could reference different things with like um, uh, inline entity forms and paragraphs and all sorts of different approaches. So um, it really depends on exactly what you're trying to accomplish, but um, there shouldn't be any reason why I, I think you wouldn't be able to do, do that on this site as well. Okay, so we, I have the, um, the intern. He created this project page. Okay. I'm just going to go back here. And I guess there's a background page. So, yeah, I, I really don't know how to do it. Yeah. I so mean, if I go to content. Mm hmm. So you have, what, how many content types do you have? And, and what, what kind of, so what pages are you, are you trying to tie together? Are they of two different content types? Um, I think the project page, well, the art, I think the project page, mm -hmm. you This is a listing page. Okay. And I, and I think the paper page will also be a listing page. Hmm, okay. And so we need to tie a paper to a project? Yes. Okay. E and each, each paper has one project or vice versa or, or is there what, what kind of relationship are they? Yeah, like the same kind of, okay. Okay, so papers on this project. So each project has... That one doesn't have any. Okay. Yep. So each each project has some pa some papers potentially. So I think the first step is in the new site is to make sure that there is two content types existing. That there's a paper content type and then the, that there's a project content type. I would check for those first. But I okay. So if you go to on the new site, so, excuse me, under structure and then. I'm on the wrong So it looks like my screen's frozen. Okay. Yeah, so under <laughs> under structure and content types, you can see if those two content types exist. So let's see. We have a lot of it. So we have a project and... Uh, the project... This is where I, I want to explain to The project mm -hmm. is something that the we have created mm -hmm. and things from the NDR box Oh, uh, oh yes, yes. Okay, okay. So would I have to make a content type called Project RDRC? Um, it looks like the papers in the same boat, right? These are both created by machines. Uh, like they're they're creating them in the back office and should not be edited. So, um, I think we're gonna. I think Valier has to create this relationship. Um, because so you have the, the project content type and then you have the working paper I see there at the bottom and those two need to be tied together somehow and since the but, but, but excuse me Jim, yeah. but this project is unique so it's different than the others okay so there's only one specific project that needs to be tied to the other I, I think so I don't know we'll have to ask the analyst okay. maybe we should wait till we can talk to Alex about this more. Yeah. Because my well, question is, do I create a two new content types? Do I create mm. project RDRC and papers RDRC as my two new content types? Hmm. And tie them in together. So yeah, it's hard to say without 
knowing exactly what needs to, to be done there. I, I think you typically don't want to create more content types than you have to. So if, if there's a way that we can accomplish this using the existing ones, that's, that, that's kind of the approach that I would, I would tend to take. Um, the, the challenge here is that it looks like these are not to be manually edited because it, um, whatever's happening on the back end is going to override these anyways. Um, so I think we, if, if we need to add um, fields to have relationships between these two pieces of content, then we're going to have to have Valir, or if we have access to, create, to adjusting the back end system, um, I think we're going to have to do it that way because we don't want to like add a bunch of relationship fields and then have those overwritten. So. Um, I think it really comes down to like, okay, um, like, is this a one-off thing? Like, how, what are these relationships supposed to look like? Are, are most projects supposed to have these working paper relationships? And then once we have that, we can, we can say like, well, how can we go about adding this relationship field there? And then I would say, um, I'm, I'm trying to think like workflow wise. So I can't tell if uh, just the structure of these is created from the back office or the actual content is created as well. So if okay, so for the project, I can, uh, what I can tell you mm -hmm. is, um, that, sorry. so the initial home page mm -hmm. is created from the back end. Not okay. The, not the font, not the content that's in it. We've been putting it in. Okay. But what gets what gets put in pulled in is the heading. And investigate. I'll, I can show you what's in the meta. I'll, I'll show you. Hold on. Mm -hmm. So we're supposed to get pulled in. Okay. Oh, well, it looks like so. It looks like the papers are being tied already. So this is what I'm talking about. So it looks like we're tying this project to individual papers. working papers. These are, they're not. They are on working papers. Oh, so, so are you trying to tie it across sites? You're trying to tie from one site to the RDRC paper on the other site? No. Uh, the, the papers that are produced on, in the project, the RDRC, yeah. they're not in the our working papers. So uh. they wouldn't be in the working paper database. Okay. That makes sense. Oh. They get in. So they're gonna be like one off. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It does make sense. So okay, so you're gonna have a little bit of a challenge there. So I think we what you need to do is you need to loop in with Valir and say, hey, we we have this other piece of we have this other type of content that is not going to be in our back end system at all that we need to create manually, that we then need to reference on these things periodically, uh, manually. So they're going to have to create an extra field for you to do that. Um, and then, w like you said, you might need to create uh, a separate content type to, to manage those. And then um, you can pull in those manually. You can make those relationships manually later. But if we don't have them do it on the back end, I think those fields that you add are going to get overwritten by their process. So I think you're going to have to loop in with them to, to set some of this up. Um, the other thing is we need to decide, well, like, uh, um, how many, so we have RDRC papers, but we probably also have other types of papers as well. So we might want to just create something called like papers and then have like a checkbox or something to t say what kind of paper we're adding um, instead of making uh, like five different content types like RDRC papers, GITE papers and things like that. So um, I, I think, you know, the first step would be looping in with Valir and, and communicating to them and saying, hey, we have this new piece of content that we have to manually tag on here every once in a while. We can't pull it from the back end office because it doesn't exist there. Can you set up a way that we can create those relationships manually once these things are populated through the, the automated process? Okay. Yeah, I, I, I think we're going to have to loop in with them in order to, to set this up, or we'll probably get in a place where we're, we're going to end up redoing work because we're, we're going outside of their development workflow. So I, I think that's probably, I would talk to Alex and just say, hey, we need to loop in with Valir and make sure that, that we can add this stuff and have them possibly add some of the scaffolding for us. Yeah. 
Well, if it's helpful, if it's helpful to put me on an email or a call with Alex, like, feel free to do that, Debbie. I'm, I'm happy to, to talk through what I think would need to be done there. Um, but if you know, or, or feel free to run with it. Either way, um, whatever works for you. Okay, that sounds great. Um, I don't know if Alex is in today, so maybe we can participate sometime next week. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, of course. Um, I could have not remembered. Yeah. Well, you had it as, as soon as I as soon as I pointed you in the right direction. You you were going faster than the screen was reloading the the page. So I think you had it all in your head. Well, thank you. Yeah. All right. We'll talk to you soon. Okay. Sounds good, Debbie. Thanks. Thanks for the call. Thank you. Thank you. All right. See ya. Bye.